Okay, today's lesson is 8-2. It's called the Reciprocal Function Family out of our textbook. Um, we're going to continue on with some concepts um, that we have discussed many times this year and build on what we learned in 8.1. So to begin with, you have your, I'm going to actually start down here with our um, reciprocal function. And I have to pause one second. My bad. So this, whoops, this is our parent function, y equals 1 over x. And we kind of um, talked about that in yesterday's um, lesson, what that looks like. Okay, and as I've um, been saying all year long, we are trying to get to the point where we can look at an equation and have some idea of what the graph is. Okay, now this is your parent function, y equals 1 over x. And um, as I said, we always have key points. And I'm going to put this up here and talk about that in a minute. But what we're looking at, y'all, um, well, I'm going to tell you, x times y is equal to 1 if you saw, if you put x on the other side. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 1. So I have negative 1, negative 1, 1, and 1. Okay, which on our graph is right here. This is the graph. Okay, and more importantly, every time you see this graph, Okay, you will have asymptotes at, uh, let's try to see if that works, yep, yeah. at x equals 0 and y equals 0. Okay, um, there's no way for y to ever be equal to 0, and if x was equal to 0, you would have 0 in the denominator, which of course is not defined. Okay, so what you need to know about these, the key information is that your domain is all real numbers except x not equal to zero. Um, you can, and your range, I'll tell you this, you can write it with a little cursive R, or you could write two little lines like that with the R. The range is all real numbers, except for y is not equal to zero. And as I said, you will always have these asymptotes. Asymptotes, remember the lines uh, that the curve approaches but never touches. And we will have x equals 0, and we will have y equals 0. And what's most important is this point right here is where the asymptotes will cross or intersect. Where are the asymptotes intersect? So when we talk about these key points, this is going to be from that point of intersection. So it's not necessarily a point you're plotting. We're going to be counting. So 0, 0 is my point. Negative 1, negative 1 means go left 1, down 1. And 1, 1 means go right 1, up 1. Okay? So look at this next. Oh, actually. And so the other, the other kind of changes that we're going to do are everything that we've talked about before. So that's y equals a times x minus h plus k. Okay? We know that h talks about shifting our graph horizontally. k talks about shifting our graph vertically, and A is that vertical stretch. So, look at this first problem, graphing an inverse variation. And what I'm going to tell you to do this problem, if we're looking for the graph of Y equals 12 to the X, A is equal to 12. So I want you to come up with two numbers that multiply together to give you 12. Okay, we had different examples in class. So anything, one of course is always one of them that works, but it might not fit on your graph. So let's go with um, two and six. That's one of the numbers my people came up with today. Okay, so if you come up with two and six, then you need to be aware that I can have two and six. I could have six and two. I could have negative two, negative six, and I could have negative six, negative two. And so they're asking us, which one of these graphs is it? Well, however you look, if I go here, I got 2, 6. That's right here. 6, 2 is right here. And then over here, if I go negative 2, negative 6 is right there. And negative 6, negative 2 is right here. So this first one is actually the graph that shows y equals 12 over x. Okay, and so the key, as you can see from our reciprocal function, is that the, these problems will always come up in opposite quadrants. So it could either be 
first and third, or it could be second and fourth. But but the ones that we're doing in this lesson will never look like this. Okay, what else do we have to do here? It says identify the x and y intercepts. Okay, intercepts. If I look at the graph, let me pause one second, please. Okay, I'm back. Intercepts. An intercept, remember, is where it crosses the y-axis or the x-axis, and hopefully you can see from that that it never, ever crosses. So we have none, no intercepts. Uh, asymptotes. The asymptotes of my graph, okay, when it looks like this, y'all, there's no plus or minus to it. My asymptotes are x equals 0 and y equals 0. What else do we have to give? Domain and range, okay? Domain, not going to change. So all real numbers, x not equal to 0. The range, all real numbers, y not equal to 0, okay? So that's domain, asymptotes, and intercepts, and that answers all those questions. Okay, um, down here it talks about what we have done before. So if you want to pause and look at it longer, but we know because we've done this so much this year that A, which would be on top of our graph here, is going to stretch our graph. If it's negative, of course, it reflects. The H shifts it horizontally and the K shifts it vertically. But let's go do a problem and you're going to see how easy this is. Okay, so what is the graph of y equals 1 over x plus 6? Identify the domain and range. So the first thing you want to do, if I've got a plus or a minus, then my graph has been shifted. So let's look first at x minus 4. The 4 is with the x. When it's with the x, we do the opposite of what it looks like. So my graph has been shifted over 4 units. And now instead of x equals 0, it's x equals 4 that I'm going to have my asymptote. So that's going to look like this. And then I am, oops, <laughs> um, go back to my pen there. So the 6 is shifting it up. And so instead of y equals 0, I'm going to have y equals 6 as my asymptote. And that is going to be here. So once you plot your asymptotes, this is the point of intersection right here. Now you're looking at what is your A value. Well, in this problem, A is equal to 1. Well, those are our, that's what our key points were. So if A is equal to 1, I'm going to go right 1, up 1. There's a point. And then I'm going to go left 1, down 1. Because I'm looking for numbers that multiply together to give me 1. And if you want to write those down, or you can write A equals 1. And once you plot those, all I want you to do is draw it towards the asymptotes. There we go. And that's it. Um, domain and range. My bad. So what's the domain? So my domain is always all real numbers except x cannot equal. What's my x asymptote? 4. And my range? All real numbers except for y cannot be 6. So that's my domain and range. Okay? All right. Another type of problem that you will have to do is write an equation from a transformation. So if you look at that, all right, what did we do? They're tied directly to the asymptote. So we need to know what this asymptote is. This is x equals 1. And this one is y equals negative 4. So I am working with this because that's what they told me. I'm translating that graph and they translate it to that. So I'm going to have y equals 2 over its x minus. It's always the opposite of what it looks like. So that's going to be minus 1 because that means I go to the right, which is what I did. And I went down 4, so it's minus 4. And that is all that you have to do. Okay? Now the last two problems here, uh, there are three of them. But um, there, it's pretty redundant between one, 32 and 34. So I'm going to do 32 and 36. And these are um, similar to the problems that you have to do for homework. But I'm going to show you what to do to graph them. Okay? Because it just looks a little different. So if it makes you feel better to actually solve it for y, that's y equals 3 over x. Okay? But it is enough. 
there's nothing being added or subtracted. So if there's nothing added or subtracted, then my asymptotes are what x equals 0 and y equals 0. And then I'm going to go back to what is my a value. Well, that's my a value right there. So I'm looking for numbers that multiply to give me 3. Well, 1 and 3. Negative 1, negative 3. 3 and 1. And negative 3, negative 1. So I'm going to go plot those points. I'm going to go over 1, up 3. Over 3, up 1. To the left, 1, down 3. To the left, 3, down 1. And then connect it to approach your asymptotes. Okay? And last but not least, let's look at number 36. So again, you got to know what that K value is. Okay, remember that was when we talked about an 8.1. Um, if you wish to solve it for Y, it's going to be Y equals negative 4 over 10X, which simplifies to negative 2 over 5X. Okay, um, not necessarily so helpful, but you might not know what A is. Okay, regardless, A is whatever else is up there with the X. So my A value is negative 2 fifths. Okay, again, nothing added or subtracted. So my asymptotes are X equals 0 and Y equals 0. But I'm going to go back, and if A is two, negative 2 fifths, you're like, I don't know two numbers that multiply together to give you that. But of course, there's always 1. So you have the point 1, negative 2 fifths negative 1, 2 fifths, um, 1, oh, mm, oh yeah, 2 fifths, sorry, not bad, <laughs> brain lapse there, 2 fifths, negative 1, and negative 2 fifths, 1. So the key that I want you to do with this is because this was a negative. So when it's negative, these numbers that you're graphing are going to have different signs. If it's positive, they will have the same sign. So to plot this, I go over 1 and down 2 fifths. It's an estimate, y'all, so sketch. And if I go left 1, I'm going to go up 2 fifths. If I go to the right 2 fifths, I'm going to go down 1. And if I go to the left 2 fifths, I'm going to go up 1. And that's enough to give me the idea of my reciprocal function and what happens to it, okay? So, didn't ask for domain and range, so we're not gonna do it. Um, I hope that you think that's as easy as it seems, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me or come see me.